This is the second part of creating this building with geometry nodes inside of Blender. If you haven't watched the first part then watch that first by clicking the i button or by following the link down in the description. So here's what we left off in the previous part and in this part we are going to add the trees on this building. So for that I'm going to add another object. It could be anything, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna add a plane and I'm gonna create a new Geometry Nodes 3 and I'm gonna call that trees. So what we are going to do is we are going to use this object to scatter trees on this object. So uh, first let me rename this, I have renamed this Agora Garden Tower. Okay, now I'm gonna select this plane and I'm gonna drag and drop this into the Geometry Nodes editor. Now I'm going to plug this into the geometry. Now it's going to instance the same object, but we don't want that. We want to scatter trees on this. So first we have to distribute points on this object. So let's add a distribute points on faces node and plug that in. Now you have to be thinking that these points are not on the building and that's because it's set to original but we want to set it to relative so now let's add an instance on points node to instance the trees now i'm going to drag and drop my trees collection we want to check all of these check boxes and let's connect this to the instance well no the, the density is very high i should have turned that down before plugging it into the instance node and it should have crashed, but it didn't crash because my because of my new PC. It has 64 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna decrease the amount by a lot. You can see the trees are everywhere. And you can see that it's very weird somewhere. Like on here, you can see, I don't know what has happened. And you can see that these are very repetitive. Like these are the same trees. And that is because the trees are the object we are instancing is an instance it's not an applied geometry remember we we instance all of these objects to create this building and then we are instancing the trees on those instances so we need to convert those to real geometry that's a node for that called realize instances it's essentially like applying all the modifiers now the issue is fixed but still the trees are everywhere so we are gonna fix that by limiting the distribution of our trees using a vertex group. So I'm going to my layout tab and I'm going to move this here and let me unhide my original collection that contains the objects to make up the floor. If I select this object and go to edit mode, you can see that there's a floating part and this is the part that I'm going to use to distribute the trees on. And also we don't want this to be seen in the renders so what I did is I assigned a transparent material to this part. So I assigned a weight of 1 to this part. And I renamed that to foliage. And keep in mind that attributes are case sensitive. So they have to be exactly the same in order to get them to work. So I'm going to just control C and copy that. And I did the same for this object as well. And the name of the vertex group is the same. Now I can hide these collections. Now let's get back to our building. Let's go to geometry nodes. And uh, sorry, let's go back to the trees. So what we need to do now is we need to use an attribute for these trees to be instanced. So in order to use an attribute, we need to plug this into the group input node. Now we can control the density from here. But if we click on this icon, now we can use an attribute for this. So let's paste the vertex group that we created and hit enter. Now the trees are only where I've assigned the vertex group. That's awesome. But these trees are huge. So I'm going to add a random value node for the scale. And I'm going to plug that in for the scale. For the max value, I'm going to use 0.5 or something like that. For the minimum value, I'm going to use 0.4 or maybe 0.3. Now this is looking very awesome. Okay, now the fees are a lot. We want to decrease the amount. So we can add a math node, set it to multiply. 
set it to multiply. I'm going to plug this into the bottom socket and I'm going to use this one for the density. First of all, let's rename this value to density factor. And now let's plug that into the growth input node as well. Move that up and I'm going to rename this to dense CD. Now we, can now we can use this value to control the density of our freeze and we can use this to control where the density is. So let me enter a fairly low amount like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 or something like that. Looks pretty good to me. Wow, this is looking awesome. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is these trees are a little bit heavy. So what we want is we want to have low poly trees to be visible in the viewport to increase performance. And we can do that very, very easily. And uh, here's the object that I want to use as the placeholder. So in the geometry nodes tab, I'm going to drag and drop that in here. Now what we want is we want this to be visible in the viewport. So we want to switch the geometry, but only for the viewports. So there's a node for that called the switch node. And we want to switch the geometry. We want to switch the geometry. So if we check this box to switch the geometry, it goes blank. Everything goes blank. There's nothing. And that's because we need to turn on as instance option. Now it's working, but you know what? Humans are very really lazy and we don't want to uncheck this value every time when we go to render mode and every time in viewport, we don't want to check this value manually. So what we can do is we can add an input called is viewport. Now in the viewport, this object is going to be visible and in the renders, this collection is going to be visible which is very very awesome so that's it for this video guys i hope you learned something new if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos and tutorials i'll be back